Hello, this is a video on Spread64. I'm going to just talk about the UI. So these are the usual icons for hiding extra details of the UI here. A uh, little help page It's going to take you to the itch page. Um, this is the open file, save file. Uh, these are to do with copying and pasting and swapping blocks and clearing blocks and things. But you can use Ctrl C, Ctrl V here to swap. You use an F11 on whatever you want to swap round. So F11, F11. You don't have to tap, you just have to press F11 to say which one you're going to swap for which. So don't really use that button, um, it's just there. And uh, it's work is good, so good to use that. Um, we've got a lovely color palette here for switching your two main colors and your global, uh, your unique color, just bright. Uh, you can press this button here to change between high res and multicolor. Uh, everything down here has to do with the composite or an animation. This is uh, flipping horizontally. Only flips horizontally, it doesn't flip vertically because of the kind of priority right now. I might add vertical flipping soon. Um, this shifts. Uh, it doesn't wrap though, it cuts it, so you kind of lose that data. So um, be good for that sort of thing if you need it, but yeah, you're just going to shift it around a little bit here. You have to redraw things. Um, so. That is that part. I'm just going to finish this number one here since I'm in the process of making numbers for some reason. This is giant number one. And that looks pretty cool. Alright, and you can change the color of that like that. So down here is the compositor, and what you can do is you can place the sprites down. Here, whatever, and you know you can make an update to that, and you'll see it will update all those. So this is more like a little reference table to your actual sprite data up here. It holds 64 sprites at a time, uh, just for the management side of it, and you know quite like the number 64 is convenient. And what I can show you here is um, that you can actually set an address flag. For these, so if you press F4, uh, you can type in the address like 6000, and you can also uh, type in something like number, uh, sorry, spray, go on number, numbers, alright, and okay. Now, if by accident you've um, made this one, you want to make this zero, you can actually copy and paste. And then you can make that a, a zero. Something to that effect. Okay, um, so that's your zero, one, and two, and I've set that address to 6000. And that means it's all the data is going to sort of be based on that address. Uh, once you save the file, you'll see what I mean, and I'll show you that shortly. Um, so I can toggle between high res and actually get a bit more definition in this. And so on. Um, other things you can do in here is you can actually overlay sprites. So I'm going to use this one here just to show you. And let's say I go for this blue colour. I'm going to just draw something down. If I click upper layer here, you see we're on layer 1 now, and I click there, you can see that's actually overlapping that, and that's how you can get those high res over multicolor sprites and to give you that kind of fake extra resolution. Um, I mean, it's just one sprite that's got the extra resolution there, but um, it's just a good way of getting more sort of colors out of something. You can see I've just kind of covered a lot there. I'm just going to clear it. Just, oh, it looks like a happy little guy. Um, I'm just going to clear it by clicking on clear there. And 
actually when I'm hovering over the sprite I can see where it lines up and that's quite convenient let me just make sure I'm using a color that makes sense uh, it's quite convenient because now I can kind of trace it to match a little bit where I want to go and that's how I can get that fake higher resolution um, if I do want to introduce more color to that I'll just go to the the, the multicolor version and then I can put in some little kind of highlights around there a bit like that and even some sort of dither effect for extra fake color did that one wrong and there we go um, so there you go we've got a nice zero belt of two sprites now you're not just limited to two layers you can actually go up to five layers so uh, zero is the base layer and one two three four extra layers on top of that just in case you really want to kind of um, overlay these sprites for some reason and maybe you're using the multiplexer so you can get more sprites on screen um, but it's just a nice way of getting more color out of it uh, I can always go up here and change the color there as well to brown or orange or something that works a bit better for that particular sprite um, quite like grey though so yeah you've got that now there's also animation stuff so if you press D or right arrow key it actually goes to the next frame you can also use this button here go to the next frame but let's say you want to copy everything, you just click on this button and that copies everything from frame 0 and you see left to right changes the frame to frame 1 and I can do something else here, I can actually offset sprites which is kind of cool save me making up a new sprite, I could uh, offset like this blue one so I'm on layer 1 and I'm hovering over this sprite so everything's going to become context sensitive and all I do is control and up Sorry, controlling up. Is it? Uh, let's see. This should be offsets with controlling arrow keys. When on, oh, I'm on layer four. That's why. So let's go down to layer one, and then control and up. There we go. So I can move that sprite, and you see if I go between frame zero and one, you can see that I've made. I'm just changing the frame number to where I've made that offset. So I can offset set that way up there if I wanted. Go to frame zero, frame one, and I get extra information on the right here as I hover over this. On the right, it tells me some information about the layer offsets. Layer one has got no offset, offset there, but uh, in this new frame, we've got minus thirteen, and that's based on this top left position up here. This is like your zero zero, and then all the way down here is like your well. If I click here, you'll see. It's actually offset 72 or 63, which is kind of like your sprite number. Like, so you get 21, 21, 21, 63, and 24, 24, 24, 72, and that takes you to that point. And then you can also offset that. And you can make up kind of little animations that way. Uh, I've made up an animation before using all this system, and basically, I can play the animation. Let's make the end frame and the start frame. You can see these dancing around now. I can change the speed by clicking on this. Uh, if I want to hide the UI, I can up, come up to the eye up here or press tab and that hides some of that excess UI stuff. Uh, it's going to stop that and it goes back to frame one when you stop. Um, so that's pretty much everything. There's a few extra things here. So tab to toggle UI, skip to quit, F6 to restart, shift and nail. These are, um, these are old fixers for older files, but Pretty much be doing away with these soon because I've kind of moved on a bit but I'll keep them there just in case there's anyone still using a very old version they want to bring in their sprites uh, but I think we're safe so as you click on these numbers it tells you the uh, as you click on these sprites it tells you the uh, the label that we give it here we can give anything a label like this one I could always give a label so F4 to create a label as it tells you there to find a label and select the sprite and then you could call that like 6600 whatever memory location you want to be loading that into and that's something I want to show you is the the sprite uh, file 
So I'm just going to click save and I'll just save this to desktop for now and just call it temp and we'll have a look at that. So I'm just going to go and find that file. So desktop and look for that temp file. There we go. And as you can see, we've got a whole lot of information here. The spread, version, background color, global color. So extra information that you can use. And then information about the spray. Uh, is it using high res? Is it a zero value? Is it multicolor? Is it one value? So this is all kind of internal stuff that you can read into later and update your game to match this. Um, Sprite's got a unique color of uh, the ID number 12, so 0 to 15 colors, and that's just the pen ID. There's the, the pointer for the memory lo location. It starts to load in these uh, these bytes, and then it would put that one in the next location, next location. And then if there's any more headers for different locations, I think there's one here. There you go. So it's going to read that in and then start to throw the sprites and from there. Now if you scroll all the way down, there's extra information. And this is all to do with the compositor data. This is all kind of internal. And you can kind of use it if you know how to read it. Basically there's layer information, sprite ID information, there's some offset information in there as well. Um, but you don't really see those until you go all the way to something like down here. And so something in layer one and these are the position offsets, frame IDs. Uh, composite coordinates. I still need to update this a little bit more to show anything that's in uh, layer zero, but these are more for like your overlays, um, simply because overlays like are more likely to have offsets for weapons and things like that. But that's pretty much it. I uh, hope you enjoy using this tool. It's on itch. It's cheap as chips, and uh, I'm just going to jump to the page there to show you that. So if you go to itch. Uh, I've got a few cool tools here in development. I'll show you those as well. So you go to Pixel Burner and Itch. That's me. Um, this is where I put my tools and things. And this is the Sprite Editor. So it's three dollars seventy nine. Not very expensive at all. Um, it's a little dude that I made here and some other little things that I've made. Uh, there's like some videos here of me making stuff. This one's really cool. And it's a Twitch stream from before where I put together this guy and also put together a little sprite made of high res sprites over multicolor and also using the stretching feature there's something I've not shown you now if you go over a if you're hovering over a sprite and you do shift x let me just make sure I'm on the right layer so I'll just press tab let's see so it's, this is an identifier to tell me there's something in layer one and if I do shift x I can toggle the x stretching shift y and toggle the y stretching uh, so X and Y gives me higher resolution and I can do that for both so it's down to layer 0 I'm using the mouse wheel by the way just in case but you can use the up or down arrow keys or these ok so shift X and shift Y uh, but you see that's been blocked a bit so I think it's been blocked by these so you just need to hide those like that um, but there you go I can actually bring this one down again just to see how that looks you can right click at any point in time to uh, remove any of these sprites depending on what layer you're on. So if you're on layer 0 you're going to right click and remove those. And there we go. We now have that looking like it's been zoomed in on. And that is pretty much it. Uh, if there's anything else there will be uh, detailed in other videos. But I'll do my best to come back and uh, make all this easier. I will try to make it so you can select these properly and assign what you want in there and, and things like that. I don't know if it's easier for you or for me but this is the way that I preferred it from the start and if you've got any suggestions then I do have a Facebook page that I've just made as well so if we go into Facebook uh, I've got a Facebook called Rob C 64 Art Tools. I talk about a uh, sprite editor here. I've only just made this page today actually um, using Backdrop Designer to make some concept for Commodore Art using the uh, the C64 fixer. This is still in progress, and that's going to be a case of when you make some C64 art, you want to make sure the blocks follow all the rules. So this is going to be a little kind of 
sub-editor for that and might even integrate integrate that into Backdrop Designer uh, in the near future. So watch this space and I look forward to seeing what you make. Thanks for watching this video and I'll catch you guys later. Bye.